that encouraging way to start your day. It's his radio. And this morning, our special guest is Mac Powell. You remember him from Third Day. Yeah. So up, glad to have you here. Thanks so much for having me. It's, uh, it's a wonderful, beautiful day here in Atlanta. And uh, yeah, gr- glad to be with you guys. Appreciate you having me. I would love to know, if we take a trip back in time, what you were thinking when you were just a little guy with glasses on. Oh, man, look at that cute guy. You know what's funny? Those glasses are so hip and in style now. I got beat up back in the day for having those nerd glasses. Now, like, <laughs> all the hip pastors are wearing those glasses. I was, I was a trendsetter. You I was sure were. Say, every worship leader has a set of those, right? <laughs> totally, totally. <laughs> How old would you say you were back there? Because we're showing Mac Powell a picture, by the way, if you're yeah, watching yeah. this online. I think, uh, yeah, I love that haircut too, man. Uh, I would, I'm guessing about 10, maybe. 10 years old. Yeah. Looks like about right. But that flow, that, that hairstyle's back in style a little bit now, too. I'm telling you, I was a trendsetter. It all right. comes back around. <laughs> After a while, you know, it's funny. I was at Liberty University. I've got three kids that go to Liberty, and I was doing a. a some students were doing this contest, taking some old third day songs and remix them in and putting a different spin on them. And uh, it's interesting. So many of them have like this kind of '80s feel and beat. And I was telling them, "Hey, I was alive and in, you know, a kid when all this stuff you guys are trying to sound like it was out for the first time. It all comes back around again." Rob, you've been around as long as I have. Am I correct in saying that? Yeah, but I'm just a little bit closer to dirt than you are when it comes to old. <laughs> maybe maybe a year or two. <laughs> right? Hey, here's one thing I don't think Liz knows about you, Mac, and that is you were a band guy back in high school. I love, I love this, uh, man. How how? I hope you didn't spend too much time scouring the internet for these things. <laughs> uh, I was that's this haircut, Liz? This is even better. You like that mullet? That mullet is so cool. And again, <laughs> it's back in style. So a trendsetter as always. Coming back, I love it. Yeah, um, and when we when we say band, we mean marching band here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was the first band I was in. Was the the. That right there, is, uh, that uniform is from, I went to three high schools in four years, and that was the Marietta High School uh, uniform in Marietta, Georgia, in the town I live in now. And so, yeah, had that mullet going. I was a terrible trumpet player, but I had a great time. I wanted to be, I don't know if y'all know this, I wanted to be a band director. That's how much I loved band. I went to school as a as a music student, I was like going to train to be a band director, and then I messed up and joined a, a rock band, and here we are. I messed missed up. up. Missed out on my life. Whatever. I, I kind of think you probably aspired by that, because when I take a really close look at Mac Powell in that high school picture back when you were in, in marching band, there's a similarity to David Cassidy <laughs> from the Partridge family. <laughs> Oh my I goodness, wish, no, you did not. <laughs> I wish I was cool as him. Now, he is quite a few years older than me. Yes. But look at that jacket he's wearing. I, I feel bad oh. for the people who are listening and not watching video now and, and not seeing. You got to go log in or whatever you got to do to see, <laughs> see this because yes. my kids, if I had that jacket, I would be cooler than David Cassidy. And wear it just <laughs> like David Cassidy. That's <laughs> right. Hey, question, how how tall are you? Six one. Well, I used to be six one. I have no idea now. I'm probably um, <laughs> shrank a, shrank a little bit. Yeah. Your happens. wife is just a little bit shorter than you, so perfect couple. Yep. You know? Absolutely. When just I'm trying to twenty five years of marriage. Yeah. Congratulations. Oh, that's so good. Yeah. I, and 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 of course, kids, I'm wondering how they get so much taller than you. <laughs> Man, I tell you right now, that's Cash. That's my son who is now uh, a sophomore at Liberty. That's him graduating from high school a couple years ago. So he's grown even more since then. Uh, it's all about the chicken nuggets with <laughs> all the hormones now that these kids are eating. That's how I'm, I'm by far the tallest guy in my family, like uh, by far. And so he has gone way. He's like, you know, it's interesting when you have to look up at your son and go, you look at me when I'm talking to you, son. Uh, it's a, uh, and I, it's funny because I'm that much taller than my dad. My dad's pretty short. And mm. so I now feel the way he felt when I got shot up taller than him. Okay. So if the trend continues, then as you shrink, your grandchildren 
are yeah. going to be huge. <laughs> <laughs> seven five. Exactly. I think Cash is six six or six seven, and wow. I'm six one, so he towers over me. Yeah. I think during the pandemic, you you explored with doing different things. Like, I think you baked pies. I did. I, you know what? That was the first pie I ever baked, or pies, and those were the last pies I ever baked. <laughs> They're beautiful. Were they not good? They were really good. I okay. just, there were a lot of trouble. It's It seems like all of that... Uh, and those those look like pumpkin pies, but they're not pumpkin. They're um, what else? Butternut they're, squash. Yeah, they are butternut squash pies, and they were so so good. Uh, yet it took hours to do that, and I went. I can just go to Kroger and buy one for five bucks. Five ninety nine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Man, you know you've traveled to different places around the world. Mm -hmm. I wonder what it was like when you visited the Dead Sea. Man. It was so cool. You know, you yeah. see pictures of people floating because of the, for those who are listening and watching, oh, there's a picture right there. When it's like, that's me literally floating on top. It's like, you have to, it's hard to stay under the water. Like if you try to swim under the water, that the buoyancy of that salt water pushes you straight back up. And it's a, uh, it's one of those things you can't really explain you have to, because people told me about it, but not until you experience it and go through it yourself, do you understand. It just feels like, you know, the water is pushing you up the whole time. It's pretty weird. It's like, okay, uh, you know, I can see how Jesus walked on the water a little bit now with, uh, with, <laughs> with no, he didn't walk on the Dead Sea, uh, the, the Salt Sea, but uh, the Sea of Galilee is where he walked. But mm -hmm. it was, uh, you know, it was pretty amazing. It's, it's something everybody's got, got to try to experience in their life. What was your trip there? I know, I know you floated in the Dead Sea, but what was the trip for? Yeah, with the first time I went, I went twice in the past maybe three or four years now. Uh, I went with uh, a church from Kentucky um, Southeastern and, and had a, I just was invited by the pastor and, and just went and, and, and was able to take scout my oldest with me. And we had an amazing time. And then there's so much that it's such a fast paced trip. We were there for 10 days, but you go through, you see so much. It's just a constant going here and there that you just kind of, it's overwhelming mm. and, and it's amazing. Uh, but it is overwhelming. And so I was able to go back and take a small group with me the second time of about 30 people, some fans of, of mine. And, and we, and I, I took cash and, and my wife, Amy, and, and just kind of re saw everything, you know, everything from Bethlehem to, uh, Caesarea to, uh, Nazareth. I mean, it was all, it was a pretty amazing trip. What's it like walking those steps and realizing the history and the significance of that area? You're, you're just blown away. It's, it's, you, you are reminded that what we, our faith is not just in this storybook thing that was made up. Jesus was a real man, God, you know, becoming man on earth and walking here. And throughout the world, there are some amazing places that you can go and visit and have vacation. But there was, even though the presence of God is everywhere, the feet of Jesus only walked there. So you can't go anywhere else in the world where the feet of Jesus were walking except there. And it's uh, to follow in a sense of the roads that he was on and in his footsteps and to see the Temple Mount and to touch some of the things that he touched, to be in the garden that he was in. I mean, it's just, it's an amazing thing. It's, it's the Bible brought to life is what people say, and it really is true. We're certainly looking forward to you coming to Spartanburg for concert. It's a it's an evening with Stephen Curtis Chapman and Mac Powell. Yeah, that guy right there is uh, Stephen Curtis Chapman. I have so many friends, so many family brothers and brothers and sisters within Christian music. As a fan of Christian music for thirty years now, uh, I still love the genre. I love. I'm a fan of so many artists, even, even new artists. Like I was out on tour with, um, with Zach Williams in the spring and they're this amazing group. Kane was on tour and like, I was a fan fan of theirs, watching them from side stage every night, just hearing their music, seeing their hearts. And so to be on stage once again with Stephen Curtis Chapman and out on tour with him, he is literally my favorite person in all of Christian music. He's an amazing man. 
the guy that you wish and hope, I mean, you guys have spoken with him many times, you know, the guy that you interview and that you see on stage and that you hope that he's really like that. He's really like that. And, and even more. And there, you know, it's interesting because, uh, Two of my favorites are Michael W. Smith and Stephen Kirsch Chapman. I got to be on tour with both of them in the fall of last year. We went out and did, um, you know, the only shows you could actually do were drive-in theaters. So, we're, so because everything's, you know, out in the open and people can stay in their cars and, and watch the shows. And it was a different kind of feeling. You don't get the feedback from an audience like you normally would. It was like you're playing, you know, to a parking lot full of cars. However... I'm still having a blast because I'm up on stage at 48 years of old going, there's Stephen Curtis Chapman, there's Michael W. Smith. You know, and I've known those guys for 25 years, been on many tours with them, but it still didn't get old. It, it's an amazing thing as a fan of theirs. Um, I'm even more so a fan of, of the men that they are. Mm. Wow, what a legacy there that you've just imparted. Wow. <laughs> for people who are listening now and can't see – uh, Rob has put up a Instagram video that I posted of two turkeys in my neighbor's yard fighting and they <laughs> literally have their necks wrapped around each other. And, uh, you know, they call it chicken, but it's right here. It's Turkey <laughs> figuring out who's going to win. <laughs> that's so that's your neighbor's yard. My neighbor's yard. Yeah. Does he like have chickens and turkeys and ca- are you like next to a farm? No, we're out in the country, though, and so it, there's not, you know, he's about, my neighbor is about 100 yards away, and it's through the woods, and I was walking on a path one day, and I heard this terrible sound. I was like, what is that? It's coming from my neighbor's yard, so I walked through the trail between our our houses, our homes, and saw these turkeys just fighting, just not backing down. <laughs> Testosterone even in turkeys. My goodness yes. gracious. <laughs> he's a bigger man. <laughs> Mac Powell, always good to catch up with you. You've been a very good friend to his radio and to me throughout all these many yeah. years. Well, Rob, man, it's it's great to to see you and Liz as well and just appreciate the support that you guys have given me and my family for many, many years. Thanks for playing the River of Life, the new song, and and blessings to you guys. I hope I hope we get to see you guys when we're out on the road. Hope we do as well. Rob and Liz, his morning crew. Not talking about their food. Mm -mm. Their food's not plastic (laughs) whatsoever. Uh -uh. Just in case you're confused, it's the Happy Meal toys. Yeah. So no more plastic Happy Meal toys. They're going green. Which I I like that. They're planning on doing it over the next couple of years. They'll be, I think it's a slow fade. Renewable, recycled, and certified materials. Getting rid of what they call the fossil fuel-based plastic Happy Meals. So they're going to be whatever that material is. It it looks like paper like card it kind of does what they're showing at least in pictures yeah. kind of looks like paper so but when you get in your hand i wonder yeah so i i don't know like if you have the little action figures or because a lot of times they'll do hot wheels for boys and barbies for girls uh in the uh in the happy meals i don't know how you can do that with paper because those are made of plastic but we'll have to see you know what it, what it's like yep 2025. So got a couple of years. What's yeah. that? Three years? Yeah. As if it's a slow fade out. I, you know, I don't think they could possibly change all of the McDonald's yeah. Happy Meal toys over. By tomorrow. Day. Completely different. <laughs> Rob and Liz. His morning crew. I'm having a hard time wrapping my brain around. They just didn't let him go on this. 43 cents yeah. can land him seven years in mm. prison. Homeless guy goes into a convenience store. He picks up a Mountain Dew, lays down two bucks, walks out. Mm-hmm. Well, he was 43 cents short. Mm. And at 43 cents could give him seven years in prison. That hurts my heart. Yeah. Some people say he might have been confused because this one convenience store was having a sale. It was two for three bucks. Oh, and yeah, he grabbed sure. one, and so he's thinking, I got enough money here. Yeah, because sometimes you think, if I just buy one, then it's half price, and not all stores do that. No, they don't. Yeah. They don't. I guess this one didn't. Oh. I don't know the whole part of that part of it. I just know that 43 cents mm. could land this homeless guy in prison for seven years. It really does. My heart like hurts because of that, because he was honestly trying, I think, I really feel like he was trying to do the right thing. He paid for it. He in his mind, mm-hmm. you know, half of three dollars is dollar fifty. Yeah, and there's more to the story, yeah. I'm sure. Don't know Maybe the guy's so. background. Don't know if he stole from the store before mm-hmm. or if he stole from any other store. But forty three cents could land him seven years in prison. I'd have a hard time make, pressing those charges. I, it if would I be were tough. The, yeah, if I were the convenience store owner, I'd have a hard time. 
again, there may be more to the story. He may have done some things at this convenience yeah, store, and they were know. done. They were over it, mm-hmm. but oof, yeah. yeah. So, got it. I'm going to make sure I got enough change from now on. <laughs> yeah, that's right. For sure. Rob and Liz, his morning crew. To figure out that shopping in some of the thrift stores can bring unexpected treasures, not just for the person who is buying what's at those thrift stores. There was a Goodwill Clearance Center, and uh, uh, Nancy went in. She was just doing a little shopping. Who knows? Looking for a handbag, looking for some furniture. She found a box, and it had pictures in it. And she was she really curious. So she starts going through it. There's marriage license. Really? Yes. There are all these old like um, drawings from kids. She said, I got to buy this. She did. I don't know how much it cost her. She gets home. She actually put it like uh, in her living room, I think, for a while, a couple of months. And then I think all of a sudden she was like, ding. I need I need to go through that. So she started going through it. She sees people's names, like all kinds of family members written on the back of the the pictures. And so she says, I'm going to Facebook. I am going to try to find who owns this, these pictures. No luck. She tells her sister-in-law about it. Sister-in-law has some sleuth skills <laughs> okay. and starts a little detective work. And she says, OK, this guy's name is Tony. Let's put in Anthony. 20 minutes later, they found the guy. Well, look at that. I know. So sometimes you got to think out of the box, like the sister-in-law. And so they they finally found the family and got all of these pictures of his grandparents, his kids, you know, himself when he was little, uh, this marriage license, like all of these things that, that are treasures. And he said they had moved as a family when he was little. And in the move, all of these things got gone. Oh, man. No idea how they got to this Goodwill Clearance Center. Isn't that Center. crazy? Yeah. Someone gave them a box of pictures, and then they put it out for sale. I, it's so, why would anybody want to buy someone else's pictures other than this? Like, let's track this down and find out who they belong to. I'm glad she did. I just want to know the story. Like, if the box and the pictures could tell the story, where have they been all this time? Right. That would be great to know. Rob and Liz. His morning crew. When you win Vacay Your Way, you get the travel agent up to $3,000. Go where you want. Set the destination. The details. Everything's up to you. All you got to do is enter to win the Vacay Your Way. Pacific Ocean. I've never seen it. You've really? Yeah, I've never seen the Pacific. No, no. Oh. Uh-uh. That's kind of like the Atlantic. Is it, though? I yeah, think it's, it's an ocean. Is, well, okay. Okay. <laughs> and, and, Salt water and okay. sea life. And there's sand. It's ama- oh, the wow. beaches have sand. And it's blue? The water is blue yeah. in certain places. In certain places, other places, you know, it's dark. But, uh, yeah, vacate your way. You get to choose mountains, ocean, you know, Grand Canyon, wherever you want to go. Totally up to you. Plus, here's the part I really love about it, is there is somebody to help you plan it. Not making your choices, but helping you plan it to take that stress out of planning a vacation. It's a way that we can say thank you for supporting his radio. share is coming up. October 19th. So we're almost three weeks away. On Monday, we'll be three weeks away from share October 19th. This is the first day giveaway. And one of the ways to win that is to pre-register with a gift of support. Go to hisradio.com. You can text the word VACAY to 800-447-7234. Do that right now. Text the word VACAY, 800-447-7234. Or you can tap on the My His Radio app. Rob and Liz, His Morning Crew. You may have noticed this, too, that there's a lot of themed Airbnbs lately. It's Robin Liz, his morning crew on his radio. There's one I think that Liz is going to like, and it's Julia Child's <gasps> Airbnb. Yeah. Somebody bought her summer getaway that she had in France, South France, for like 30 years. And so what they wound up doing was they didn't change a thing. Mm-hmm. There's no updates. It's exactly the way that Julia Child's left it. Oh, that's Awesome. And it's an Airbnb now, so people can actually stay there and see the way that Julia Childs lived during the summer. Oh, my goodness. I'm thinking about, like, actually cooking in her kitchen that Julia Child cooked in. Made beef bourguignon. I'm getting, I'm getting the sense that you're, you bake today because of this lady. So I, I, yes, I think she's part of that inspiration for sure because I... Like um, I think my mom had one of the cookbooks, and then I got one of the cookbooks, and then I've seen them around, and I've picked them up. And her cookbooks, yes. And Julia then I, Childs. I've seen there's a movie about her that I love. Like it was such she's such an amazing, colorful character of a person that yeah, I think it is 
part of that inspiration why I like to be in the kitchen and bake. And, and, and you know what? She messed up all the time. Oh, really? Yes. Like but, you? You don't. Me- you don't. No, well, listen. Excuse me. She she did a thing yesterday, and they look nothing like scarecrows. They're either one person called them pumpkins. Yes. Jake and Ninja. What did you say they they looked like yesterday? Snowmen. Uh huh. Snow. So yeah. they looked like snow. My daughter said Men. Charlie Brown. So Charlie yeah. Brown. Yeah. So Julia Childs. I get it. Like she would burn things on her TV show. Um, you know, it wasn't on purpose. She wasn't trying to be dramatic or anything. She just, she was a little flighty. And I just love that. Because so of I, her, you're yes. kind of baking today. That's one I, of the influences. Exactly. And just her whole personality and not taking yourself so seriously. I love hearing stories on, on the influences mm-hmm. of people in life that make you the person that you, that are, you are today. Yeah. yeah. Like Julia Childs for Liz. <laughs> Who was it for you? Rob and Liz, his morning crew. You're the person today, in part by this one person that you know or in your life. They inspire you to be who you are today. It's Rob and Liz, his morning crew on his radio. For Liz, it's Julia Childs. Yeah, I think so a little bit because she didn't take herself very seriously. She had a lot of fun. She pulled some pranks, which was, you know, a lot of fun. And and she uh, she cooked and baked. And so I think, yeah, that's why I do what I do. Yeah, that's what Julia Childs is known for yeah. back in the day. Yeah. And a very unusual voice. I can't even, like, pull it. Try, to, try, um, try. Come on. Oh, I've burned the beef bug and yawn. And she did, didn't she? <laughs> sort of, yeah. She would do that kind of stuff. Jake, one of our uh, morning show video producers, it was a, it was like a cartoon character for you. Who was that? Yes, yeah, so there is a Japanese cartoon, which is called anime, called Naruto, and he inspires me to just keep going, especially in the gym, just to go hard and just to keep never give up. Wow. A never give up kind of guy. That's, that's Jake. He yeah. never gives up. It can be a character. It can be a real person or somebody in your life. Yeah. Lisa's along with us at 800-447-7234. You said this is for your husband. So who inspires your husband? That's John Wayne. <laughs> Why is it John Wayne? He grew up watching the movies with his um, dad. He also loved the quotes, still does, has a couple of them in his office. He just feels like he is like the epitome of Americana and that a lot of people aren't willing to put in the work that was portrayed on the movies from John Wayne. And he, as a manager, he really feels like if you are real, willing to work hard, He's willing to work hard, whether it's cutting grass or cleaning toilets or whatever it is. If you're willing to work hard, I'll, he's he's right there with you cleaning toilets. So it doesn't matter that, that he's the manager. It doesn't matter. He just feels like that, that was a work management skill that he picked up from John Wayne, and he just felt like if, if he can be that tough, so can I. Now I'm curious. What does your husband look like with the cowboy hats on? <laughs> He doesn't wear a cowboy hat, but he sure does love his boots. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> Robin Liz, his morning crew. I wonder what it is for you. I think I know what it was for Liz. Hmm. It's Robin Liz, his morning crew on his radio. Your beach trip to Alabama this year. Yeah. Favorite memory for this year so far? I think seeing my uh, granddaughter feel the water, the ocean water for the first time. Oh, and how she, neat. She cried yeah. at first. And then just loved it, loved being out in the sun. So That's good. so yeah. great. Yeah, we went it. camping this year, yeah. which was a good memory. Uh, Karen's here at 800-447-7234. What was it for you, Karen? We went to Indiana on a road trip with our family to my younger brother's wedding. He lives in Kokomo, and he was getting married at the end of June. So we took about a week and drove with all five of our kids and stopped several places along the way and took pictures and had a good time up there. And then we did the same thing coming back. We came back a different route. And what happened since then? Uh, we, we all ended up getting COVID at the beginning of August. My husband was tested at work just as part of his regular testing time for the week. And his test came back positive, even though... He didn't have any symptoms, and none of us had any symptoms. And within about 12 hours or so, he was very, very sick. And we tried to get help and weren't able to get help until I finally just drove him to the emergency room, and they admitted him immediately through the ER. 
and he was there for three weeks before he passed. Oh, Karen. I am so, so sorry. It's been very hard. It sounds like what you did this summer is so precious because you, you must have all the pictures and have them posted. Well, we were on the trip. Several things happened that I was I felt like God was prompting me to do certain things. There were certain pictures that I took of the four girls dancing with their daddy at the wedding. Karen, I am so, so sorry you guys have traveled through this. This has been so horrible for so many people and it's really struck your family hard. Know we love you and we care for your whole family. Thank you. Robin Liz, his morning crew. Scientists really worked hard mm -hmm. to come together with paint to actually make a mixture of paint that'll ward off what the sun can do to heat up the inside of your house by painting the outside of your house the whitest paint that they've ever come up with. Mm -hmm. It is so white, the paint is, yeah. that it reflects. You know how a dark color kind of attracts Absorbed. the heat? Yeah, right. It absorbs heat and makes the house even hotter sure. on the inside. They're saying that this really white color, that's the whitest color they've ever made, mm -hmm. is reflecting the heat off of the house now. Well, it it's makes, amazing. It makes sense because even like your clothes, as we get into fall and winter, the colors are darker and it really does absorb some of that heat. And in the summer, it's lighter. So I get where they're going with this. Yeah, they say solar radiation and infrared heat. Big factor in the whole thing. Been working on it like seven years. Yeah, they finally, finally came up with it. They think that they actually have it, and they have teamed up with somebody who is going to distribute this paint, but they're saying it's going to save on electric bills, and you might be, I don't know about here in the South, <laughs> but they say you might be able to eliminate your air conditioning altogether. Not just... Really? Yeah, not oh, just, you know, on. set it at a different mm -hmm. temperature, but get rid of it totally. In the North, maybe. Not here. That's what here. I'm thinking. There's no... Not here. In certain parts of the world, south of the equator, you're telling me it's going to work and there? And who's going to paint their house that? I mean, you got to pressure wash the thing all the time. I don't know. If I if if it worked 100% and I could get rid of the air conditioning and that bill, I'd do it. Then you'd have to wear sunglasses walking up to your house. I wear sunglasses all the time Because anyway. it'd be so bright. <laughs> you'd come up and go, whoa, dude. So you're cool on two levels? Yeah.